So somewhere on your, I'm just going to try and get this so it's not quite so keystoned here. There we go. Put your card somewhere on your newsprint and trace that out. It doesn't matter where you put it. And then then move that move the, the card aside, put it somewhere safe so it doesn't um We're going to use this as a template. A couple things I want you to write on this to begin with is just write the word, um, um, what is this? It's not the spine, it's the... Um, it's got a name, why can't I think of the name? Um, Anyway, this this is we'll just we'll, for for lack of a better term, it, it's going to come to me. We'll just write spine over here, so we know that that's on the left side. That's the spine. This is if we were looking at the book straight down, um, straight down on it. Let's see, where are my samples? Um, where did those? Where did my books go? Have they made it around? So this is that size right here. As we were as we're looking down at our card at the book after it, just imagining that this is in it this is how we're looking at. We're looking at the face of the front cover just for orientation sake so we know what's happening. We need this to be 3 millimeters. Um, the cover needs to be 3 millimeters um, larger that way three millimeters larger this way, and three millimeters larger on that side. So you'll take your ruler. I'm going to push mine out to three millimeters. Make two lines. One, two, three. We want it just a little bit bigger all the way around. And then I'm going to extend my sp the the spine just a little bit longer and then I'm going to draw those around. I am not adding three millimeters to the spine. We're only adding it to the front edge of that book. Okay, so we've got this nice space all the way around right here. Three millimeters on all the sides. This one looks a little big. Is that at three or is that at four? Oh, it's at three. Okay, this one looks a little off here. It is. There we go. I need to bring it out a little further. Not that way. There it is.
There we go. Now our papers that we're working with here, they're 140 millimeters wide. So now with that three millimeter on this side, our covers are going to be 143 millimeters. Does that make sense? All right, that way. Then our pages themselves are 100 and, I thought they were 110. That one's a little short. Let's see. 107. So this edge here on our cover is going to be 110. There it is. That's why. So our covers will be 143 millimeters by 110 millimeters. I just added the three millimeters the whole way around. Any questions about that? So we have the three millimeters. To the top and the bottom and then to the right side, the side that opens. Okay. Top, and bottom, and then over here. Th that is, that's just showing you that this is the 110 spot. But now this is, this cover will be 110 millimeters. From the spine side, this is where our fold and where we'll be putting all of our binding. Lay your ruler down and come out 20 millimeters. Give it two marks and trace those lines. Where it says spine, you only have one line on your spine. So you're coming from the left side, and then you only have that one mark to do, to identify, and then draw that line from top to bottom. I'm just cleaning up some of my some of those extra lines inside that so that everything is clear. I'm clean and I don't need to worry about it. So I'm going to get rid of the 140 line marks inside because I don't need that anymore. If you vote, if you drew, if you wrote that down, you can disregard that. I just don't want anything getting in the way. So right now, here's our book. This is our cover. Uh, let's see if I can use a darker. Do I have a pen? I don't think I do. Okay. So I'll just go over this a couple times with my pencil to try and give it a dark. So now you can see here, this is all we need to worry about. We've made a template for the cover of the book.
Does anyone need me to come around? I think when we did this in class last week, maybe I was using 15 millimeters and 20 millimeters, something like that. So it was a little bit smaller, but with this book, we're going to go just a little bit larger. So now you've got this spacing here, which is 20 millimeters in between these two. I need to stop writing in the middle of that 20 millimeters. That's from that. And that's where, we're, that's where the binding is going to be. Next, let's put our ruler back in that space. Mark out 10 millimeters, two spots. And draw a line to connect those dots from top to bottom. This is going to give us the middle of this. Um, of the, the binding section here. And this is where we'll, we'll use to, um, to guide us along the way as we poke holes through our paper and through our, our um, covers. And we're going to use a four hole binding on this. If you've done any kind of search on Japanese side stabs or side binding, you'll know that there are hundreds if not thousands of different patterns that you can make bringing um, some very decorative st stitches that can go up and down that, um, that binding. Um, we're just going to use the basic four punt, the four holes. Um, we want this one to be a square, though, this top one to be a square. So that means that we need to come down 10 millimeters from the top, because we're 10 millimeters in. And so that is going to give us this square right here. Then I'm going to do the same at the bottom. Come up 10 millimeters from the bottom. Put a mark right across that line. Right where those cross, that is where we will um, use our awl to poke a hole into the paper. The next marks that I'm going to make are going to be at 40 millimeters. So that first one was at 10, this one is at 40, and then I just repeat that again at the bottom. That gives me fairly even spaces in between those binds and it puts a nice um, close hole at the top and the bottom to hold the, the covers together and to give it a tight binding. So all I did here, just as I'm talking about this with you, those were the, this is at 10 millimeters 
this is at 40, and then this one was at 10, and then this one was at 40 from the bottom. I just eyeballed it and looked to see what was going to be, um, what would look fairly symmetrical, and that's where I landed on those. If you are using um, a larger book cover, if you're making a larger book, then those will get spaced out even further, and it's likely you would want to start moving um, in even numbers so that it ends up being, um, so that you end up on the inside to tie off. Start going to six holes or eight holes, depending on how big your book is. Does that make sense? So just on this one, um, the side binding, even number of holes um, ensures that everything is going to line up and that you, that last stitch that you come through can be tied off on the inside. Then um, we just need to, uh, we're going to cut this out. This is our template. We're going to use this to, um, to measure out our covers. And then we're going to use it to, um, to um, as a guide for where we're going to punch the holes through the, the book. And so um, in order to be able to do that, we just need to get this out of this piece of paper now. So whether you use a pair of scissors or an X-Acto knife, either way um, will work. I would encourage you to use a straight line, a straight edge if, you, if you're using any kind of X-Acto knife, just so you can get all of that, get it perfect, get a, a give it perfect lines. Ricky, Ricky. <laughs> Nobody around you will though. Well, yeah. Okay, here's my here's my template. Give you a couple minutes to get that cut out. While you're waiting for that to happen, you can go ahead and pull out a piece of bookboard. Check to see which way the grain is running. Whoa. Uh, you're going to you're going to lay this down here and use it as your template. If you want to measure it and go through all of that on this, then you can do that as well. This is really, so um, what we've done here is done this one measurement and we're going to transfer that to all of these other aspects of the book and we're pretty much done with any measuring once we have this template cut out. Now remember when you, um, when you cut out your, um, your shape from your book board, you want to make sure that the grain of the board. Oh, hey, look at that. Oh, look, can you see that? Oh, yeah, I made that yesterday. I, I can't, this was, this was also, oh yeah, look at that. This is also something that I did. I cast this. This, this is um, aluminum can, recycled aluminum cans, by the way. I um, melted down in a furnace aluminum to molten made a, a, a lost cast ring and poured resin into it to fill the holes out. I'm feeling pretty dazzly today. <laughs> it is. 
It is. Um, I, I, I have. I have only recently. Yeah. Yeah. So just remember, you want the, your, um, I got sidetracked by the ring when I was looking at my computer, sorry. Um, you want the, the grain of your book board running parallel with your spine. This is just, we're just doing another Japanese. This, right. So I'm putting this right here, and then I'm just using my template. I'm lining it up into those edges. I'm tracing down the edge, and I'm only going to cut one out. So um, it's going to be as you are tracing around, your line might be a little wobbly. That's all right. You can bring in your straight edge afterwards. Straighten that out. And then I'm going to cut this one out. Then I'm actually going to use this one as my template to cut out the other one because using this pattern over and over again if I was going to if I had to make a lot of these then maybe I would put this on some sturdier paper but right now this is all I need for it because I'm cutting this out and then I'll be using this as my pattern Then I'll use that first cutout that I have and trace around that. That gives me the second, the second cover that is exactly the same size as the first one. You need to make two. You have you need a front and a back cover. could be caddy at the same time. <laughs> wow. <laughs> okay, so I'm just going to give you a couple minutes here to get those cut out. We'll go on to the next step here in a moment. All right, here are the next steps for this. We've got our two, we've got the, the two, the two covers that are the exact same size. We're going to, 
I'm on trying to figure out where this, how this sits in here now. Making sure that it's completely lined up, it's perfect. We need to measure these lines out onto our book board here. And so there's a couple ways to do this. One would be for us to just cut this line off. Where's my all? First of all, I'm just going to use my going to use my all and I'm going to so you see that I've got it all laid out here. I'm just going to poke through the newsprint and I'm the goal here is not to go all the way through. I'm just looking to get those four holes punched into it. Do that to both of those. Once you have those holes established, then you can go ahead and um, bring that all th back into those. Just widen those out just a little bit. You'll poke all the way through the cardboard. You're through your bookboard. I also like to just go back in the reverse through the back side of the hole because as you've pushed this through, you've pushed material out on the back side of it and it's created bumps here. And so by pushing back into it, it helps to push, those, um, push some of that material back into that hole so you don't have to worry about it. And then I'll use my, um, my bone folder to go over both sides of that just to smash down any of those high spots. The holes are still there. <clears throat> Just redrawing my three millimeter mark at the top of this so that it's dark enough for me to see and my three millimeter mark at the bottom. That top and bottom is going to become, um, is going to be important to us here when it comes time to poke holes into our, um, into our papers. So just kind of make sure you have that. Now you've got your measurements here already, so you've used your template to poke the hole through that. We need to, um, we're going to copy those measurements back over to our book board on one cover. So I'm going to come out 20 millimeters. That's the same measurement that we used right here on our template. I'm going to connect those lines. Hinge, hey, 
Now, I'm not talking about any dating app, but I am talking about, that's what this is called. It's called the hinge. See, I told you it would come to me. <laughs> I, I don't know. Don't ask me what it was. I was thinking about it at, the, at that moment, but it was, um, that's where I was at. Anyway, and then you're coming, you need another mark at five, at five millimeters. So you're at 20 millimeters, and then you go out five more millimeters from that line. You see these two lines that I have right here. So this first one was at 20. That second one essentially was at 25. If you're counting, if you're working from the back cover the whole way, or the, that back edge. These will be the marks that we cut off. So I'm going to, um, I've been using my exacto knife. I need to get out my utility knife here for this one. So I'm going to cut the, um, the hinge off first, and then I need to cut off this, also cut out this five millimeter spacer. This is the, um, the part that's, we, we, uh, that's going to allow us, we're going to cut that out and discard it. That's going to allow the hinge to do what it needs to do um, as we um, turn from page to page. All right. So you'll end up with you'll end up with these three pieces. After you've done that, you can use these pieces for your measurements here. So I'm going to put that large piece on top and trace it this way. My hinges are going to be exactly the same. I'm not going to use that paper. And then I'm going to put that little piece up there that I cut off. That's that five millimeter. And then trace along that. And now I have those two more lines for me to cut across and to cut the hinge open and apart on that neck on that second piece. We need the hinges on both the front and the back cover.
Oh, these seem to look great. It'll just blend in with the other 32 I have in the primary colors of black, gray, and brown. Who has work in this juried student show? Did anyone have work in this, this the juried student show? Yay! All right, Daniela. Yay. Woo! All right, fabulous. And what uh, what piece do you have in there? So, so continue to do that. It, um, it, 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 
you're looking to go to grad school, and having these things on your resume do, um, do show that you're engaged in the art community. So not just for the school itself, but go to, there's a website called CAFE. Um, CAFE is an acronym for Call for Art something. And, um, and you can, there's all kinds of free shows. Oftentimes they'll charge you 20 or 30 or 40 dollars to go in to be a part of it. But find a show, start submitting to all these things, and then you can put a list of, of, of shows that you've had your work showing in. It shows that you're willing to put your work out there. Um, it's called cafe. Cafe, yeah, call for, um, call for art. Call, I can't remember what it is. It, but it is cafe call for artists. And then also with that, then there's all kinds of scholarships, which leads me to the next thing. There's only about, there's so much money available to you. I was kind of blasé about that post about you should apply for a scholarship coming up. They only have students to give away about half of the money. Uh, it's coming up. March 15, May, I don't know. But. I do. Okay. All right. All right. So, so, so apply for those. So apply for scholarships. There, there's, there's a ton of money there for you. Um, oftentimes, you've got to supply um, uh, an artist statement, and if you are coming from 307 with me, boom. Right, August? You still have that somewhere, right? <laughs> You're looking at me like, I thought I had that somewhere, but I don't know. You don't like yours? I think I was a little full of shit when I wrote it. Well, we're all... That, that, that happens. So I think I would like to take another crack at it. Gotcha. Okay, so I need to move forward. We are at 9.30. And we are on track to not even being finishing one book today. So let's, uh, let's move forward with this one here. Here is... Uh, this is your, um, your book cloth. And... Um, I'm going to lay this on the book cloth in a manner that would make it so I can kind of see where everything is before I start cutting anything out. I'm actually going to put it up towards the top so that I can use um, some of this perhaps for the inside of the covers as I go through this. You want to have at least a half an inch that's around 20 millimeters around the top edges, uh, top side. So you can get out your, um, your ruler and just kind of place that into a spot. Just to make sure that you've got enough space all the way around when you do that. And this is enough space for me. I've got enough, plenty of, plenty of room here. So I'm just going to push off. I'm going to work with just this first cover here. Making sure that I have 20 millimeters at the top and the bottom. This is for the hinge part of my book. And then I'm just going to use my pencil. I'm holding that tight. I'm going to trace the top and the bottom and the side of that. Pull it away just to make sure that I can see my marks. There they are. Now this is the important part. I'm going to take this spacer. I'm going to put it back into that spot. I'm going to push my cover up tight to it. And then I'm going to trace around my cover. I can hold that there, move those things aside. I didn't do a very good job of cutting this. It's not square. It's kind of lopsided there. I'm going to tilt that just a little bit. 
to make sure that I have an even five millimeters running down in between those two. Got a spacer here that's five millimeters just to double check. Okay. All right, there it is. And then I'm going to trace my marks 20 millimeters all the way around the edges of these. Now, looking at some of the photographs, Think about your books, and if this was something um, you encountered on yours, then I'm talking directly to you. If when you folded your paper over the edge and there was a space in between them in the corners and you could see the book board through it, that means that this space here was not long enough in between the book board and the edge where you cut that this needs to be just a little bit wider. So if you encountered that, then I would suggest that you cut a little bit on the outside of that. So mark maybe 25 millimeters all the way around. That will get you um, enough fabric, book cloth, to wrap all the way around. And then I will use my spacer, my bookboard spacer to draw my miters on this. Roughly 45 degree angle. And then cut out. Scissors. I'm going to do just do this one cover at a time here, just so I can keep everything. in frame. You'll need glue and your brush. Got a fair amount of dried glue in my brush I need to pull out here before I get started. Yes? Um, I, I'm getting ready to glue it on right now. And so I'm, I'm not sure as you watch me what the quite what have I done that is that's not quite jibing with what you remember so far. No, it's just quite literally it's just that last thing you did look like it. Uh, you glued down the cover first the like you glued down both of them? Oh um I'm doing this just so that I can keep everything here in frame and that it's not um it's it's not like too big of a, I've got a crowded workspace. So this is just the first one, and then I'll come back and do that next one in a moment. So I just need to glue these, um, glue these down into that space. So um, give myself Twenty millimeter. At, um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Twenty millimeters um, buffer all the way around. That's about a half an inch. Oops. And then I tried to glue it the wrong way. I'm glad I had my. Um, my grain markings on that, it told me I was off.
just making sure that remember to make sure that your um, your hands are free of glue and it may be a good idea to put newsprint underneath your book while you're working just so you don't have to worry about any glue that's on your workspace. I'm just pressing down right now all the way around with a bone folder. All kinds of, there we go. And then I'll go through that process again with this one right here.
Okay, I have um, a demo here for you to all kind of take a look at. So another common bookbinding sort of um, challenge is not only getting everything folded over and then when you get all this folded over that they cover over the top of it, but not having too much to cover over the top. You just want it to fold over. You don't want it to get too but is, are these little nubs that stick out on the end of your book, on the end of your corners. So if you have something like this, if you've encountered this in your books, then um, you've, you, this looks familiar. If you haven't yet, at some point you'll end up with something that looks like this. These are pretty easy to take care of. 
The one thing that you'll need to do though is put a little bit of glue. I'm just going to take this drip and put a little bit of glue on that outside flap. Look, I'm trying to get right into that space right there. It's not enough glue though. I don't want to put too much in there because I don't want to squeeze out. And then I end up coming with, let me use a different bone folder just so I can get the point in so you can see this. You're going to, right along this edge here, you want to make sure that you have enough glue so that the book cloth will stick, but it won't slide around. So you, that is kind of a tricky um, amount of glue for you to figure out. You'll get, a, you'll get a, the hang of it as you continue to work through these books, though. So I'm going to push down on the corner. I'm going to come underneath the book cloth, and then I'm actually just going to flip it over a little bit to cover that hole, um, to cover that corner. And I'm going to give it a fair amount of pressure because I'm using um, just a small amount of glue. This glue is really tacky, you know that. It gets stuck down there pretty easily. If you use too much glue, that's not going to stay there. So take a look at that. I mean, that is just the tiniest bit of overlap on that. And then when you pull it over the top of your corner, I pulled a little too much in and glue it down. You'll have a corner that matches the corner of your book. Take a couple of tries here to make sure that I get everything perfectly aligned and then pull that in. And instead of having that little bit of tuft that sticks out, everything is round, um, you know, rounded around that corner. So it just takes a little extra time while you're doing that. But pay attention to this, to that, um, those corners. Those will be the kinds of things that I'm looking at in terms of the craft on your first project to see that your corners are all aligned there aren't any corners that are showing and that you have um, essentially mastered the art of, of covering up that book board. So I'm, again, I'm just going to fold this over just the tiniest bit and then I will put some glue here. and continue gluing down. Now, here is, here is a, a tip for you. As I'm doing this, I'm not just kind of folding it up and then laying it over. Like my corners aren't going to match. So I'm actually pushing this fabric up. I'm stretching it as best I can along those edges. And then when I push down, I am putting a heavy amount of pressure on my bone folder and I'm pull, pushing down and I'm pulling it, trying to stretch it as I do that, pulling on those edges so that it lays flat, those corners are hidden. If I wasn't doing this, then I would have had a gap right here. This is almost like a perfect miter. That's a little too close for my taste right here. Because it could, if I hadn't pulled on that hard, you'd be able to see the book board through that. So I'm just going to talk through this again on this side here. I'm just gonna put a little bit of glue on right into that corner. If your edges are pulled up at all, like right here, put a little bit of glue underneath that and get that um, pulled down, tacked down. Just bend that tiniest little edge over the corner, not looking to do anything more than just like a millimeter of coverage on that. That's all that we need. That might even be like a half a millimeter. I mean, it is so tiny. Okay. Just a tiniest bit. Take your time while you're doing this and hold it down until when you pull your bone folder away from that corner that it's going to, um, it's going to hold. 
I think I've talked about this before. I always put a bead of glue along the edge of this book board because I want that cloth to stick to the edges as well, not just to the top and the back side of it. And then spread my glue out. And again, I'm just I'm going to be pushing on this and pulling on it pretty hard here. Make sure I don't have any glue on my fingers while I do this. And if I would, if this is sort of the, the spot where you're going to know if you're using the right amount of glue. Because once I push this down, um, it was adhered into place. If I had used too much glue, then it would flip open. It would just be too wet, too loose, and it would end up um, opening back up on me. But I put just the right amount of glue there and pulled that up. Now you can see that how that hinge works with the book cloth. Right, the end paper right here. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, and I'm, I'm going to do the other um, the other cover, and then I'll um, start walking through the um, the end papers for this. Now I'm going to set this aside, get it as far away from my glue as I can. I don't want to get any glue on that cover, and start the process all over again. Sounds, sounds like a horror movie there. <laughs> I never did Coachella before. I 
able to, like, I, I learned Illustrator, so, like, I was able to, like, make the little braces I put on my arm. And I was like, oh, shit, I forgot my hydroplasty line. I got out. And then I looked at him, and he's like, you have a fake ID. You know? and, then I, and then I started running, and all of a sudden, I was like, you have a fake ID. You have a fake ID. Yeah, you have a fake ID. And then all of a sudden, I was like, you're chasing Alvera Street. Like, it was like a stupid cartoon where, like, you exit through one door and you go through another. Yeah, yeah like, chase you. Then I woke up. Is this what you tried to tell me? Date, the date farms, as in the fruit. All right, I've got um, the next step here on this. So I've got, when you get to your, um, you've got your beautiful covers, it's time to, um, time to get some holes punched in these here. All right, so you'll take your template again. You'll just lay it right down on top, get it centered. Make sure that your hinge is lined up on the hinge side. It'd be really sad if you. What does that mean? Right? Okay. See this right here, the flap? Oh, okay. Over here. Okay. It would be really sad if you lined it up and you got everything perfect and then you poked holes in the top of the cover over here where there are just going to be holes and then you have to redo that whole cover, right? So. Make sure that everything is lined up the exact way that it's supposed to to be um, in the in the orientation that's supposed to be. I'm lining this up, and then I'll just take my all using those guides again. And as you do this, you'll probably f realize that you're poking right through the holes that you already had in that bookboard. Like they should slide right through that book cloth right into that hole. Pull it out of the way. 
poke all the way through the book cloth, the book board one last time. And then you're going to use that um, as your template. Now, watch what I'm doing. I'm not doing these on top of each other like this. That's not how this works. They need to be back to back. So like this, you've got um, the inside covers facing each other. Lay them down on top of each other and use that as your guide. If these are off at all, if they're not even, your holes, the previous holes that you punched, and you put it down on top of it like this, lay these covers with their book cloth facing up, then when you turn it around, those holes aren't going to match up. So you want, just like in sewing, when you put pattern, when you're sewing pieces together, the insides to each other, that's what we're looking to have here. So make sure that the inside of the covers are facing each other. This time you're going to go down all the way through to that bottom you don't need to go all the way through you just need to make those holes mark those holes out and then once you move the top cover out of the way you can go ahead and go back through and push those holes they will likely come all the way through so you can see and then you can um, poke back through from the um, from the outside in When you do these holes, depending on the thickness of your thread, like I'm using a thicker wax thread, I'm actually pushing my awl all the way through to where it gets past the tapered part of the point to widen that hole up so that I can pull my needle through fairly easily. If I was using th um, thinner thread, then I would definitely make the holes as small as I could so that the binding wouldn't become too loose. All right, there we go. So now we've got the holes, and then the next step is to put the end papers on this. Just seeing what I have here. Is any of that going to work? No, that's not going to work. All right, let's talk about end papers for just a moment. End papers are the papers that cover up your um, your your the rough fabric, the rough cut fabric. It's decorative. Um, you can also use it. Um, I you know you can add content to your book by what you're how what you're using as your end papers. I am using the cards that I, this is just the card that we've been using the whole time for this project. I cut it in half. And because the book itself is three millimeters wide or wider than this card the whole way around, it fits really well. I don't have to do anything with it. I am going to line it all the way up to the back end of the book though, all the way to the, where the hinge is at so that I have a nice three millimeter spacing all the way around the outside. So, I think I've shown you how to do this before. I'm going to put glue in the middle here on the book board. I'm going to spread this around. And I know that I have a three millimeter gap, so I'm just going to put a little bit of glue about halfway out on this cloth 
but I don't want to get too close to the edge. When I use my bone folder to burnish this down to smooth it out, I'll be pushing some of that glue out towards that space. Um, I need a little bit more here on the hinge part. And on the hinge, I don't have to worry about that at all because it's not going to get opened. So I can be a little, um, I can go out a little wider with the glue on that. Position it before you start pressing it down too um, and getting it stuck into space, to place. Just make sure that all of those are in good space. We've got good spacing all the way around. And then I'm using my bone folder here to go over the top of the paper and get that glued into the book. doing a squeegee kind of motion just to push any extra glue in there out to the very edges of the paper. And then I'm just finishing off those covers by getting those holes all the way through the end papers.
All right, the last step on this, um, in this, well, the next step in this particular project is arranging all of the pages here. Now we are, we are, in, we've got this going for us right here. It says the haiku um, spring twenty four is a variable edition collaborative book printed at California State University. What variable edition means is that there's going to be changes with each one of the books because we're all using different book cloth, everything else. But we also have this contributors page here. And the idea for the contributors page is that it should be, um, this is our table of contents. So the pages should be arranged in this order. Um, Malai is not here today, actually. She's not feeling well. And so we don't have her page in this. So if you want to wait to um, bind this until later, until you get that on Tuesday, um, you're welcome to do that. Um, and then also with mine, uh, with my name, the eye washed out when I was doing, um, when I was exposing the plate. So you can either put a hand draw that eye in there, or you could put an apostrophe and it would be Kurtz Taylor. So uh, whichever way you want to remember me by. I think it's just Kurtz Taylor. Now. Kurtz Taylor. I think that's your name. There it is. So, um, all right, so I've got um, the, the title. I'm just going to flip over, and I'm going to start stacking these. I'm going to put that here, but I've got an extra one here. So, Caitlin, let's see. If I don't remember which one it is, let me know when I get to it. The Kalfon is the last page. Yes. And... Caitlin has been blessed with the B Benson. So um, this is yours, right, Caitlin? Yes. Okay. All right. And then Ty, which one is yours? I'm sorry? Coffee cup. Okay. Here it is. Fabulous. Um, Ashley, yours was, I just saw yours. Here it is, right? Okay. And then, um, let's see, August. Which one was yours here? Tree, right there. Um, let's see, Stephen, yours is right here, right? Um, let's see, Alondra's is this one right here. All right, Crystal, which one was yours? This one? Yeah. Crystal, which one is yours? No. Ah, gotcha. All right. Thank you. That's very helpful, actually. All right. Everyone should pull theirs out so I can see it. Um, and then, Micah, which one was yours? Uh, what's that? Oh, um, all right. The, thank you. Here it is. That one? Is that right? Okay. Um, Ariana, which one was yours? This one. Okay. Um, Madison, the pink, the heart, the cake? Um, let's see. Yolanda, um, this, wait, this one? This one. There we go. Um, Quinn. I gotcha. Thank you. Um, Karina. Hands. There we go. Um, let's see. Daniela. This one? Okay. Angie. Um, that's this one, right? Um, Rebecca was love sick, getting easier. Curtis is, oh, Malaya's would go into that spot. Mine is run DMC. Um, oh, wait, Ricky. Oh, I skipped Ricky. Sorry. Let's go back. Let's see. Rebecca, Ricky, Malaya, me, and then Maria. 
then, so I am going to, um, I'm going to walk through the process, and then the colophon goes on the back of this. Now, I want everyone to remember their number, and I'm going to put it right here so you know where this goes. Caitlin, one. Tyler, two. Three. Ashley, four. Steven is five. Alondra, six. Crystal, seven. Micah, eight. Ariana, nine. Madison, ten. Yolanda is 11. Quinn is 12. Karina, 13. 14 for Daniela. 15, 16 for Rebecca, 17, 18, 19 for me, and 20 for Maria. Now, you have one important thing, two important things to do on this. So I am number 20, I'm number 19. So this is, uh, and there's 20 books here. This is, my mine is 19 of 20. Of course, it's a bad... There we go. And sign it. All right. This is going to be in the video at the seven-minute mark. Well, never mind, because it's all going to get put together. I've been breaking this into smaller chunks. So you'll have to scrub to find this particular space. Actually, so you don't have to, so you don't have to watch this whole thing. Okay. And then I'll put that into the um, I'll put that in Canvas so that you can see where they go. All right. I'm sorry. Do do what? Well, focus focus on what you're doing right now. This I'll send this out and and so then you can put. Oh well, you don't know the you don't know what's going on. Ah. Okay, I'm a little slow. All right, here we go. This is now. Now you're going to have to follow the video. Haiku contributors. Where's where did I put the names of the? Here we go. Ty, Ashley is next. August, Stephen. No, I'm not going slower because i got to go on to the next thing. You'll have to watch the video. Um, Alondra, Crystal, Micah, Ariana, Madison, Yolanda, Quinn, um, Karina, Daniela, Angie, Rebecca, Ricky, there we go, Whew. I was nervous there for a moment, I thought we were going to have to, um, Malaya is in there, um, in that spot, then um, Curtis and Maria, and then your colophon, that is now in the video, you'll have to scrub it. You have done this binding before, and so um, the moment of truth, does it work? Oh, that would have been sad, wouldn't it? Oh, that's going to look so good. Haiku, and then spread all the way through. Now we've got to get these holes punched through here. So... I'm going to take my haiku. This is going to be, we're going to make a template. So I'm going to use this piece of newsprint. I'm going to trace around this. I don't need to get too crazy with it. And then I need to go out three millimeters <clears throat> on these edges. And over here, let me draw this line so that it is. So printmakers, you'll 
This is essentially just a registration jig that we're creating right here. For those of you who are familiar with that, so I'm just going to do this. This is the top edge of my paper. And then, um, let's see, it gets lined up perfectly with this side right here. With this edge. Now, <clears throat> you've got your template. All you need is a small piece of tape. You're going to line your template up onto the, the hinge side and push it all the way up to that three millimeter mark. You're going to tape this down. This is use two pieces of tape that creates a hinge that you can flip up and flip down. Because we have so many pages in this book, we can't do all of them at the same time. So I'm just going to grab three at a time. I'm going to place it on these lines that are the page lines right here, the left hand side and the top edge. Then I'm just going to fold this down. Poke the hole, poke the hole, poke the hole. Flip it up, there's my holes. They've gone through all of them. I'm just going to set those aside. Make sure that I keep them in order. And then continue to go through just three of these pages at a time. This will ensure that your, um, the holes on all the pages are in the right spot and that when you bind it into your book that your pages stay even. They're all level on the inside of the book and nothing falls out and that they all have um, the holes in them. Make sure they're facing up. After you've completed that, then you'll just want to go back through your pages 
and widen those holes that you've punched. Um, because each one of those holes, well, how many times does that thread go through? Twi at least twice. In those top corners, I think the thread goes through it three times. As you go over and then um, back through them. So I'm just making sure that the, all the holes that I've punched so far, just spreading that out. All right, so you have just kind of gone through the whole set of what it's like to make one fully completed book. You know, you may have another half hour, an hour left of, of sewing or gluing and everything else. So just kind of keep that in mind. Like one of the reasons why I wanted to do this was one, to show you just, you know, step by step the whole way through in, uh, in producing this book. You already have the experience on binding these, so you can do the, um, the side binding on your own. But it takes a while to, to produce one book. It could take upwards of, um, you know, if you have uh, some templates set out and some jigs set up, you might be able to um, speed up the process, but it's going to take several hours just to assemble the books. Not to mention all of the extra time that you've put into this. So that's why I wanted, that's why I started class off today with looking at those prototypes that I'd made um, yesterday so that you could start planning on that and working on those um, over the weekend. When you finish this project, what I would really like for you to do is get a, bring it back in, get a good photo of it, or if you've got something at home where you can get a good photo of it and then submit this in the stitched binding. You've already, some of you have already put some, um, some your stitch books in there, but I'd like to see this one completed too, just to see your, um, your process on it. Yeah, both of them. So I can kind of see a before and after yeah. too. Like this is 
the the one we did last week was really sped up and fast. This one we took the uh, our time, making sure that we concentrated on all those little things like corners. Okay, so that's it for today. Um, I'll get the videos up here 